Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In previous lecture, we have discussed the torque components of this double excited electromechanical energy conversion system. Also, we have shown how the geometry and inductances of the magnetic circuit can decide the available torque components in the magnetic system. In this lecture, we will learn how to develop the mathematical torque expression of this double excited system. As we can see, this system consists of fixed part called stator and rotating part called rotor. This system has two excitation coils or windings fed by two sources Vs and Vr. The procedure of developing the torque of double excited systems is similar to the procedure of developing the torque or force of the single excited systems. Basically, to develop the torque of this double excited system, we need first to develop expression for the field energy Wf or co-energy Wf dash and then take the derivative of the field energy with respect to the rotor position theta. Note that we are going to assume that this double excited system is linear magnetic system to simplify the mathematical derivation. Now let's first derive the field energy expression for this double excited system. As mentioned before, to derive the field energy, we need to use the following two assumptions. First, assume that the system is lossless. Second, assume that the mechanical power is equal to zero. That means there is no movement. In other words, the moving part held fixed and prevented from movement. Under these two assumptions, the energy balance equation dWe over dt equal dWf over dt plus dWm over dt will equal to the following. As you can see, the change of the field energy dWf is equal to the change of the electrical energy dWe because the mechanical power is equal to zero. In other words, all the electrical energy applied to the system will be transferred as field energy when there is no mechanical movement in the system. Now since this magnetic circuit has two electrical sources or two coils, then the change of the electrical energy dWe will be equal to the sum of the change of stator electrical energy dWes and the change of the rotor electrical energy dWer. Therefore, the change of the field energy will equal to dWf equal dWes plus dWer. The change of the stator and rotor electrical energy can be represented in terms of magnetic field linkage as shown. Therefore, the change in field energy dWf can be represented by dWf equal Is deep psi S plus Ir deep psi R. The stator magnetic field linkage psi S is equal to psi SS plus psi sr. The rotor magnetic field linkage psi r is equal to psi rr plus psi rs. Therefore, the change in field energy dWf can be represented by dWf equal is d psi ss plus psi sr plus ir d psi rr plus psi rs. Please review the previous lecture to get better idea about these magnetic field linkages. Now, if we assume that the magnetic system is linear magnetic system, the magnetic field linkages can be expressed in terms of inductances whose value depend on rotor position theta as discussed in a previous lecture. That means psi SS equal ISLSS psi SR equal IRLSR psi RR equal IRLRR psi RS equal ISLRS. Therefore, the change in field energy dWf can be expressed as shown. 
Note that LSS represents the self-inductance of the stator winding. LRR represents the self-inductance of the rotor winding. LSR and LRS represent the mutual inductance between the stator and rotor windings. The mutual inductances LSR and LRS are equal because they have same geometry. The mutual inductance can be donated by capital letter M. We learned from previous lecture that all these inductances change with respect to rotor position for this rotating system. However, these inductances are constant at this point because we assume that there is no mechanical movement in the system when we are in the process of deriving the field energy WF. So we can take the inductances out of the derivative as shown. Therefore, after some simplification and mathematical manipulation, the change in field energy DWF can be represented as follows. DWF equal LSS IS DIS plus LRR IR DIR plus M DIS IR. Now by integrating the change of field energy DWF, the field energy WF will be equal to WF equal 1 over 2 IS square LSS plus 1 over 2 IR square LRR plus M IS IR. The field energy equation can be represented in matrix form as shown. The short form of this equation is WF equal 1 over 2 capital I transpose capital L capital I. At this point, the field energy expression WF of this system is achieved. Now, if we allow the moving part to rotate under constant current condition, the torque can be developed for the double excited systems by using any of these two expressions. At this point, the field energy expression WF of this system is achieved. Now, if we allow the moving part to rotate under constant current condition, the torque can be developed for the double excited systems by using any of these two expressions. T equal DWF dash of I and theta over D theta or T equal DWF of psi and theta over D theta. As we know from previous lectures, if the magnetic system is assumed to be linear magnetic system, the field energy WF will be equal to the co-energy WF dash. Therefore, this co-energy torque expression will be used because it is easier to use the co-energy torque expression in this case. In other words, this expression is already function of currents and we are going to take the derivative of this expression with respect to rotor position under constant current condition. Note that since we allowed the rotating part to rotate, now all the inductances of this double excited system are not constant and changing with respect to rotor position. Please review the previous lecture for more information. Now by taking the derivative of the co-energy with respect to rotor position theta under constant current condition, the torque of the double excited system will be equal to T equal 1 over 2 IS square DLSS of theta over D theta plus 1 over 2 IR square DLRR of theta over D theta plus ISIR DM of theta over D theta. As you can see, the torque expression of this rotating system is equal to the sum of three terms because the three inductances of this rotating system are changing with respect to rotor position. The first term 1 over 2 IS squared DLSS of theta over D theta represents the torque component that is generated because of the change of the stator self-inductance LSS of theta. This component is called the stator reluctance torque component. The second term 1 over 2 IR squared D 
LRR of theta over d theta represents the torque component that is generated because of the change of the rotor self-inductance LRR of theta. This component is called the rotor reluctance torque component. The third term ISIR dm of theta over d theta represents the torque component that is generated because of the change of the mutual inductance m of theta. This component is called the mutual interaction torque component. Also can be called the primary or mean torque. Usually the mean torque or the mutual interaction torque is larger than the reluctance torque components. The direction of the torque of these two components depends on the change of the self inductances only. In other words, the direction of the two reluctance torque components is independent of current direction because the current is squared. The direction of the mutual torque component depends on the change of the mutual inductance and on the direction of the stator and rotor currents. In other words, the mutual torque can be negative if the two currents IS and IR have different sign and can be positive if the two currents IS and IR have the same sign. So the mutual torque component is the only torque component that depends on the current direction in addition to the rate change of inductance. It is worth to mention here that the mutual torque component is generated in almost all industrial electrical machines while the self-inductance torque component can be available in some of the machines. Basically, the geometry of the machine or the magnetic circuit determine the available torque components in the magnetic system. In the upcoming lecture, we will take some examples to show the impact of the machine geometry on the developing the electromagnetic torque T. The matrix form representation of this torque expression is T equal 1 over 2 I transpose DL over D theta I where capital I, capital I transpose, and capital L are as shown. Let's conclude this lecture at this point, and we will continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I'm Ihsan Al-Nabi, and it was pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.